Hey guys, Dean here. So today we're going to be talking about how you can start a YouTube channel and start monetizing it to get it to be successful and profitable. Why should you actually listen to me with any of this advice? Well, my main YouTube channel has now been scaled to over 100,000 subscribers and I've been making videos for quite a few years at this point. That probably took me around two to three years to actually get. So I kind of know what I'm talking about in this regard. So I'm going to share some of the things which I learned and some of the practices and methods which I use to hopefully get you guys to be able to start a successful YouTube channel this year if that's maybe a New Year's resolution or if you don't quite have the knowledge there. If there's some kind of knowledge gap then this video should help you out in that regard too. So the first thing what you need to do when you're creating any type of YouTube channel is you need to actually pick the niche. This is where you stop and you think and you analyze what kind of topic or genre do I want to go into? What are my videos going to actually be about and what video ideas can I actually get flowing? So the great first thing to do is to pick a niche so you know what you're actually getting into. Now, if you don't really have a clue what niche to pick or what interest to start doing your videos on or what topic to actually choose from, then the best way is to actually think of something that you're either passionate about, something that you have a vested interest in or something that you're generally just good at because then these will never fail you, okay? So if you already have some kind of interest, this could be something that you're really good at or something that you're really interested to learn but you want to get better at, you can still make videos showcasing the journey of you learning that skill or getting better at that thing which can resonate with other people too so it doesn't necessarily have to be something that you're proficient in either now remember if you do actually like what you're doing this makes it a lot easier to keep making the content and to stay motivated because with youtube like i said before it took me two to three years to actually get it off the ground to a good level and i still have a lot of growing to do so it's a real big uphill struggle with actually growing a youtube channel and getting it to be really big and if you're doing something you don't particularly enjoy when you're trying to scale it, it's going to be very easy just to slack off or quit on the journey before you get there. So it has to be something you actually like because growth is very slow and sometimes it can take weeks and months for anything to take off and 90% of your videos at the start won't get any traction whatsoever. Next up is what you need to do is focus on creating high quality content. So what do I exactly mean by this? Now at the start of making videos it's very evident that your videos are not going to be very good. You can make tens if not hundreds of videos and they'll probably turn out to be very bad but the more that you make the more proficiency you're going to get and the better you're going to get of producing videos and creating content which is actually enjoyable to watch or that has some kind of value for someone watching it. Now the idea at the start is just to keep creating and creating to actually get good. If you're not good at something at the beginning then you're not going to be able to take off with it but if you learn and you keep consistently posting you learn that skill because just like with anything or any kind of job or skill creating youtube videos is kind of a skill which you have to learn and there's a very high skill curve to it some people have a natural affinity to it some people have grown way faster than i have because they just have a really natural ability to entertain for an example but most of my videos are based off value and education rather than entertainment so you do see a lot of entertainment channels take off very quickly if that's their model and that works well for some people but if your channel is going much slower than other people you're not getting any virality sometimes it does take a very long time for most people and it's really dependent on your type of content and the proficiency and the skills you already have high quality content can attract an audience and then posting consistently high quality content or content which is valuable then retains that audience which you've actually acquired now if you're not exactly good at being an entertainer i'd recommend just to make some kind of educational or valuable videos most of my videos on this channel are about business and making money so there's actually inherent value in that that people can learn which makes them stay when watching right if you focus solely on entertaining if you upload something which isn't particularly very good or is quite boring then people will switch off and if entertainment is the sole value that the video is based upon then it's very easy for people to switch off that video if you're great at being an entertainer that works really well you have big entertainers on youtube like ksi logan paul huge youtubers like speed those kind of youtubers are really good at entertainer right and they absolutely blow up but if you're not particularly good at being an entertainer, I'd recommend just being an educational YouTuber or a YouTuber who uploads videos based on what people are actually trying to learn or search for. But one thing that is actually seriously immensely powerful is if you're very good at being an entertainer, but you're also very good at speaking eloquently or speaking some kind of facts or providing some kind of free education. This merges both of them together. So you have education and entertainment, and this makes the edutainment space, which is extremely powerful because people are learning some 
something, they're getting value and they're getting entertained a lot by what you're saying or how you're saying it, right? So that's extremely powerful. And in most cases, that's the kind of huge creators which will see that explosion of success. The next one is consistency. So consistency is very key when actually making YouTube videos. So what does this mean? Well, consistency is the rate at which you're uploading videos and obviously you don't want to be taking too much time off. If you're being consistent, maybe you have some kind of schedule, that's usually what works best. So I'd recommend trying to kind of give yourself a schedule or at least work towards having kind of like a schedule or a semi-schedule when uploading videos. Now, at the start, you can't always have a schedule because it's not going to be a full-time gig. Maybe you're going to have a job already or maybe you're a student in education. It's kind of hard to allocate so much time to it, right? You may not have enough time to set the goal of doing daily uploads. So let's take me for an example. I had absolutely tons of time. Time is what I actually had when I started off the YouTube channel, which kind of gave me an unfair advantage. Now, eventually I did have to get a job to work at the family business. And I also had other things like when I was in college, but when I was at home, I had a lot of time, which allowed me to just pump out videos. I think the most videos I ever made was probably about four a day, which is kind of ridiculous, but that is obviously gaming videos, which are much easier to record and produce and daily uploads as it is just uploading one video a day is actually still pretty hard and a lot of work especially dependent on the type of the videos that you're making this obviously allowed me to grow much quicker in a shorter period of time but i'd recommend to try to at least do one video a week if possible at the very least one video every two weeks but what i see that works the most for people is doing at least one video per week that seems to provide a decent amount of growth without your channel dying and without the journey being way too slow because if you're uploading one video a week which is very good quality then after one to two years you'll typically still see a lot of good growth and potentially reach success with your channel which is what we're trying to achieve in that short time window right of course i did get burnt out when i was pumping out absolutely tons of videos and i slowed down a little bit but those small spurts of you doing that can be really good but if you're not the kind of person that can do that or if that's going to affect your consistency then i'd recommend doing a more relaxed approach to content creation do what you can and base it on the amount of time that you you have and your actual opportunity when you lose consistency you can also lose motivation and actually stop uploading and that can be where you see these channels that were doing quite well they actually picked up some momentum but it says they haven't uploaded for one month sometimes even two three four five or six months so that's quite crazy so don't lose that momentum try and stay in it for the long haul and pick a schedule which allows you to be consistent without burning out so let's talk about promoting your channel and actually getting some kind of exposure when you start making good videos do you feel are offering some type of value or they're actually good for people to watch first i try to look at your content objectively and think about will people actually enjoy watching this will they gain some kind of value from watching this and is it worth people spending their time watching this video if all of those are yes objectively and you're making some pretty good content then naturally all you really need to do is just keep posting until youtube's algorithm picks up your content and eventually shares out to people and you'll get one or two viral videos or big videos and your channel will just naturally start to grow. The good thing about YouTube is the whole YouTube ecosystem kind of just works for you. You don't need to pay exorbitant fees on advertisements to get your videos out there. You can share them on other social media channels like Instagram or Twitter. Twitter doesn't really work as well as it used to. Even when I was using Twitter to promote a little bit, I wasn't really getting any results with it. It's very saturated nowadays and everyone's doing that. But you could also share it on your blog or your personal website and maybe that might help a a little bit as well now i'd recommend learning some kind of seo skill so that's search engine optimization that's optimizing your titles your descriptions your tags and your general videos metadata which is all those things i just mentioned before this like the title description and tags and try to optimize it for youtube search engine so if you find things that people are searching for like hot topics you can find those on things like google trends or you can see which games are being played the most right now or what's the hottest topic in this niche and use research tools online to know about this then you can make content that's probably going to be searchable also make sure to put the tags on your youtube video into your descriptions and titles and try and put keywords and write those into your titles and descriptions to allow youtube search engine to pick up your content a lot easier the more you explain what your video is when you upload it the easier it's going to be for youtube to identify what it is and categorize it and obviously people will more likely find it that way if you just upload a video with no tags no description and a random title the chances are you're probably not going to get many views 
So we're gonna to continue to talk on this point. So let's talk about actually optimizing your content for the purpose of discovery, right? So YouTube's algorithm is actually coded in a way to actually promote content that's either popular or it's engaging or popular and engaging. So the system will identify your content if it's good and actually put it out there, okay? So this is why you should try and focus on a title that's very clickable a title that's relatable to what the video is and also try to learn thumbnail design okay this may take you hundreds of videos to actually optimize or you can pay a thumbnail designer for like five dollars a thumbnail but i'd recommend just learning the skill yourself if you're good at photoshop you can do this very easily otherwise you could use a website like canva.com to actually use templates to make thumbnails a little bit easier if you have a good thumbnail that's clickable and is very attractive and it kind of has a relationship to what the title of the video is and they work well off each other it's going to be a lot easier to get your click-through rate higher meaning the amount of people who clicked the video in comparison to the people that were shown the video that will give you a higher click-through rate on your video videos with a poor title and thumbnail will get no views i've made the mistake in the past where i didn't really take much time optimizing or thinking of a good quality title and the thumbnail was a lot worse than what it could have been because i just rushed it and didn't spend enough time on it and this resulted in some really good content in some cases not getting many views at all some getting hundreds of views when they could have got thousands of views so you want to put more time into this and it actually is more important than most people think especially if you're making long form content that takes you a long time to make just doing a bad title and thumbnail and not putting effort in can make the difference from your video not even taken off right so let's explain the click-through rate a little bit so let's say we got 10 percent click-through rate on a video and it was shown to a thousand people you can see this in youtube studio it will show you the impressions which is the amount of people that saw the video and then the click-through rate so if the impressions were a thousand people and we got a 10 percent click-through rate then 100 people would have watched the video right now another thing that's really important when optimizing videos is you need to learn to get better at editing and also pacing your videos now pacing your videos you can do this by recording your commentary and how the videos are actually broken down and pacing in editing you can do this by how the videos are cut and how they're optimized and edited for entertainment so especially with entertainment content one thing that lacks in heavy regard is editing sometimes someone can actually be really good at being an entertainer but they're not very good at the editing side of things and if they can't afford to pay an editor their content is lacking because it's not cut very well so learning editing and getting better is very important you can kind of get away with it with educational and valuable content because people will more likely stick around for longer because they're actually learning something they want to get from you but if you just do an entertainment then it's completely reliant on keeping the people hooked on the video so bad editing can really get people to click off along with click-through rate which is really important which we talked about before watch time is also important too if you have a high level of watch time that means people stuck around on your video for longer and watch more of a percentage of it so if you have a high watch time and a high click-through rate youtube's algorithm will go crazy and more likely promote your video in some cases it might not actually promote your video always but having these two metrics high is the recipe for success with the algorithm click-through rate and watch time are the two biggest metrics the algorithm looks for because it wants to see people are interacting with your video and sticking around for your video and then it wants to put that video in front of more people's eyes. That's the way to get easy organic natural growth without paying for any kind of promotion or sharing it on other social media platforms. YouTube as an ecosystem actually rewards you for making better videos. So the better you get, the more you'll get rewarded for it, which is actually quite a good system. So next let's talk about collaborations. So this is collaborating with other creators in order to leverage their audience and them leverage your audience to actually naturally grow together and elevate each other through content which you do together. Now collaborating with other creators is a great way to cross promote each other's content and work off each other's strengths to grow each other's audience, okay? So if I work with a creator who has a thousand subscribers and I have a thousand subscribers we're each sharing our thousand subscribers with each other and maybe like 20% of each of our audiences might subscribe to us okay so 20% of his might subscribe to me and 20% of mine might subscribe to him or her so we can kind of give each other natural growth by showing our audience who this person is and doing a video together this can be quite a very successful way for creators to grow especially when they're a bit larger and they want to tap into new audiences now I've never actually done a collab with anyone on. at the start I kind of wanted to get to a certain place where I could say I did it all myself so I was a little bit stubborn in that regard but in retrospect if I would have actually tried to source collabs with people it would have grown my channel a lot quicker sometimes it's quite hard to find collabs because if people are bigger than you 
they probably don't want to collab with you because they're not going to get as much of a benefit from it. And if someone is smaller than you, you're probably not going to want to collab with them either. So the idea is to try to find someone with a similar sized audience or a channel that you will find mutual benefit from helping each other. Collaborations can really propel your channel forward much quicker and it can really be dependent on the type of content you create and whether a collab is actually worthwhile doing. For an example, if you're a vlogger, it's very easy to collab with people because you can just meet up with them in real life and create some IRL type Type content with them and the second easiest genre to make collabs with is actually podcasts because you can just invite a guest onto your podcast talk with them interview them and it's very easy to collaborate with people in that type of format probably the most next up we're going to be talking about short form content short form content has seen an absolute boom in the last year and it's still very popular now you will be riding the train a little bit later and you'll be jumping on the bandwagon a little bit later than other people did if you weren't early on this then you might not get the crazy viral growth some people have been seeing with it but you're still going to get a lot of views so this is basically the idea of creating tiktoks or youtube shorts or instagram reels all three of these are what we refer to as short form content which is usually like one to three or four minutes right but usually under one minute is the optimal duration creating short form content can really propel your channel forward because they seem to get a lot of views and people can just stumble upon your content when scrolling through the youtube shorts feed or the instagram reels explore page or when they're just scrolling on the TikTok for you page, right? The reason why this type of content is powerful is the algorithm just throws random content in people's face and just sees what sticks. It's like throwing stuff at a wall and just seeing what sticks, right? It's the same thing that these apps do with the algorithm. It just throws content at people. If they don't like it, then they'll pass over it. If they do, then it'll show you to more people. So it's a very easy way to actually get exposure. Now, if you go on the YouTube official app on your mobile phone and you go on your long form content, there's actually a feature called edit into a short. This allows you to edit a segment from a long video into a short format video and then you can directly upload it to your channel. The great thing about this is it will also link back to the long form video if people choose to click it too so it's a way to gain traffic from the short directly to your long format videos so you can share the audience from shorts onto your main channel and see some good growth. YouTube have done a really good job recently in crossing the bridge of people going from short form to your normal content so you can actually use shorts to grow your channel a lot easier now the great thing about shorts is you can make a channel on all three platforms tiktok youtube shorts and also on instagram reels and you can upload the same short on all three platforms and if you use the same consistent name on all platforms that you do on your youtube channel then you can also link your youtube on all platforms too and use it as free promotion to grow your channel from all different social medias. You can make one video, post it on three platforms, get a lot of views and promote your YouTube via a link in your bio. So it's a pretty good way to actually get exposure. I'd recommend to aim for at least one short per day because that's probably the most easiest way for people to do it who don't have much time to see the most growth from it and benefit from it the most. So next we're gonna talk about actually engaging with your audience. This is something which a lot of people seem to neglect, but it's something that can really help out your channel's growth and your community in general, okay? If you want to create that extra layer of connection to your audience, actually engaging with them, replying to their comments and questions, and actually having that communication with them is gonna make them obviously like you, trust you, and know you more and return to your channel. And obviously the goal is for your audience to know, like, and trust you. And that will be easier if you have a business later because people will feel like you're valuable to them and they may want to help you out by buying something from you. So this is a good way to actually make the channel profitable in the long run because you're helping people for free. So on my main channel, the one with 100,000 subscribers, what I do is I make the effort to reply to each and every single comment. Now it's impossible for me to reply to every single comment on my channel on the older videos because I have like over 1500 videos at this point. So there's just so many comments that I can't reply to every single one. But every single new video I upload within the first one or two weeks I will always reply to all the new comments so I can keep up with people leaving comments okay I have like a backlog of multiple months of old comments that is really hard to go through and I just don't have the time but I always reply to new comments on my channel now on this channel that you're watching I can reply to literally everyone as I still have that luxury because it's not yet grown to the size my other channel has yet so I still have that luxury to connect with the audience in that personal way replying to everyone's comments in a positive fashion can foster a more non
non-toxic community and also helping people and replying with positive reinforcement, feedback and answers to their questions can also improve your community's loyalty. And it's very crucial for your channel's success because it will create that layer of a loyal audience who will always come back to your videos. And also if you ask your followers or your subscribers for ideas for future content and videos, it also helps to make them feel more included and part of the channel as well. Next up is learning from successful creators. So you want to try and analyze all of the successful creators in the niche that you've chosen or the category of YouTube that you're making videos in and look for people who have a lot of subscribers or a lot of views or views and subscribers and see what their strategy is, what's worked for them, what type of videos are they uploading and what has been their YouTube strategy to actually grow to get to that point. This is a great process to see what worked for them and also to try and take some ideas for what your YouTube content strategy could be to try and grow to the same level. And for those of you who are short of ideas or who are maybe not as creative, you can also use those channels to get some ideas for videos. This could be ideas for video titles or video ideas. Let's say that they made an old video that was really successful, but it needs updating or it's a little bit outdated. You can remake that video that's newer with newer information that will still help people and still be valuable. So next up, let's talk about monetization. So YouTube's ad policy has changed in the past few years because originally people were making some content which wasn't ad friendly, they were breaking the guidelines, they had to unfortunately enforce new rules, which makes it a lot harder to actually get monetized on YouTube, but it's still very possible to do so. The current policy requires you to get 4,000 hours of watch time, so that's a total of 4,000 hours of people watching all of your videos in the last 12 months, and also 1,000 current subscribers. This can take quite a few months, sometimes in some cases many months to actually achieve, but if you're consistent with it, it's very attainable, especially if you're putting out content which is helpful, valuable or searchable, it's very easy to get to this point with consistent effort after a few months. Now once you actually enable ads and YouTube allows you to do so, you can then apply for the YouTube monetization partner program and once you're approved then you can enable ads and it will automatically allow you to enable ads on all of your old videos and all of your new videos so you can monetize your whole backlog of videos automatically without having to manually go through the settings which is really helpful. Now there are some limitations though on getting monetized, for an example you usually in some cases do have to make the content yourself, there's some issues with using computer voices or making compilations of other people's content or using copyrighted material. It's a lot harder to actually get approved for YouTube monetization nowadays which I've only just discovered recently. So you may want to take a look into the guidelines and look at the specific other requirements which are involved in getting approved. Now the partnership deal is basically YouTube will give you 55% so you get the majority and they'll keep 45% so it's a 55 to 45% split of the ad revenue on your videos which is typically very good because not many other platforms give you the majority share because they're doing all the legwork to find you the advertisers and automatically putting them on your videos with you just doing minimal effort other than just uploading the content you enjoy so it's a pretty good deal in that regard. Now for an example we have two things so we have the CPM which is cost per mil and RPM which I believe is revenue per mil okay so the CPM is basically what the advertisers pay per thousand views and the RPM is what you get per thousand views after YouTube's cut so what we want to look at is the RPM you can see all of this on the YouTube analytics in the YouTube studio if you want to see them per video or for your general channel so you can always see these values so for an example let's say I uploaded a video and the RPM of that video was one dollar so I'd get one dollar per thousand views which is a very low figure right but let's just use it as an example and let's say I got a million views on that video with a one dollar RPM that would basically mean that I'd make a thousand dollars off that video if I got a ten dollar RPM then I'd make ten thousand dollars off that one million view video now some niches will pay much higher than other niches so for an example the business niche and finance niche typically pays very high sometimes you can get like twenty dollars to thirty dollars RPMs and in the crypto space you could get maybe twenty dollars RPM for an example whereas the gaming niche you might only get anywhere from one to five dollars so it's a lot lower in terms of comparison but gaming channels typically get a lot more views to actually make up for that now other options to actually monetize your channel to make it more profitable is we can use YouTube studio so YouTube studio has a few monetization features other than the YouTube ads these are the YouTube merch where we can create merchandise like clothes mugs and vinyls to sell to your audience and display it on YouTube's merch shelf which will show it below your videos in their description so people can just quickly buy your merch which is pretty cool then we also have super chats and super thanks super thanks people can just donate and just send you money through your video if they enjoy it and super chat 
that is they can send a message in a live stream and donate just like they can on twitch.com okay so a pretty cool way to make some money if you're a streamer youtube memberships is also an option this is very similar to patreon.com you basically set up a series of membership tiers on your channel and you can give them rewards for purchasing each tier you can offer them perks or emojis and custom badges in the youtube comments and just basically give them something for supporting your channel you do though get a very small percentage of the youtube memberships though so it's not very profitable unless you have a lot of memberships so i don't personally use it on my main channel the best thing you need to get drilled into your head especially about youtube is you basically get paid in relation to the amount of value that you provide right this is a very key business fundamental but it's exactly the same with youtube the more value you give from your videos the more views you get on those videos and the more ad revenue you make the amount of money you make is in relation to the value of your video or the entertainment value of your video if your videos are genuinely helpful and they solve a problem for someone or they provide some kind of help or offer some kind of inherent value you will obviously acquire more loyal followers subscribers and in turn get more views and more people will be showing your ads and you'll get more ad revenue from people watching and clicking those ads so you want to optimize making better content to make more money it's literally as simple as that this is why you should focus on all of the tips that I've given you in this video course such as the promotion the SEO to optimize your video to be actually found collabs editing and just generally growing your online presence because the more views you get the more ad money that you get and also the more money you get from people purchasing your things so let's talk about sponsorships on YouTube so to actually allow sponsors to actually pay you and contact you you're gonna need some kind of business email now I'd recommend creating a business email on Gmail but I'd recommend you to not use the, the email which you log into your YouTube channel with because if you use this then people who want to hack your account will know your email already and all they'll have to do is figure out your password so use a business email that's different to your YouTube accounts email preferably use gmail or hotmail.com something which is trusted and you can put that in the video description if you go to YouTube studio and click on upload defaults you can put your business email in the upload defaults which basically means every time you upload a video it will already be there in the description every single time so if you forget to put it in it will always be in your description and then people who find your videos will see your business email in the description description and they have the opportunity to contact you when you customize your channel on YouTube you can always put your business email in the about page so people can also find it that way too I'd recommend to put it in your description and the about us page to improve your discoverability and make it easier for brands and sponsors who want to work with you now when you get enough momentum on YouTube naturally brands will already be attracted to you it can be very tempting or incentivizing to join some kind of YouTube network or some kind of partnership company which will promise to give you sponsorships and brands Brands, but for the most part they don't actually give you sponsors they just want a cut of your money you can find brands and sponsorships entirely on your own when your channel gets big enough they will just reach out to you this is also a really good revenue source now one big thing with brands and sponsorships is you need to look out for fake scam emails and what's called phishing emails which are emails which are people trying to actually steal your account they may send you a link to a virus like a program that you download a website that you log in that looks like YouTube but will steal your account or some kind of way to steal your account or your login credentials there's a lot of fake emails coming from foreign email addresses like .sc .cz and a lot of different foreign countries like Russia that will try and hack your account and I've had hundreds of them sometimes daily so you want to really be careful with every single link you click and don't download any random software that people send you saying that they're going to give you a brand sponsorship because sometimes they'll say that it's a media kit or some software you need to download and it'll just hack your account if you've seen all of those Elon Musk investing channels on YouTube I think they're called Ark Invest or something like that allegedly those are most likely hacked accounts I see tons of those Ark Invest accounts I don't think they're actually made by that company I think they're fake hackers who are pretending to be one of these companies but they make an investment account and they upload tons of Elon Musk videos to your channel and they just basically use your channel for free promotion for their viruses and scams so don't get scammed and get your YouTube channel hijacked because that's a big mistake that you can make when clicking on fake scam sponsorship emails next we're going to talk about affiliate marketing so affiliate marketing is also another way to actually make profit off your YouTube channel now I don't recommend affiliate marketing for anyone who's making content which doesn't show their face because most of the time people won't actually click your links or buy from you or buy a product if you don't have that personal connection with your audience if you don't have any trust with them or any physical presence like your face or your identity on YouTube it's very hard to get people to actually click on affiliate links this basically involves you signing up to some form of an affiliate program in our case it's 
usually Amazon affiliates, or it could be some other kind of program or service or selling a product through a website like ClickBank. Now I'd recommend just to stick specifically with Amazon Associates because it's much easier to get people to buy from because people actually already trust Amazon and already trust all the products on there. So it's gonna be much easier for you to actually get people to buy things. And if someone clicks your special link, which Amazon will give you and buys the Amazon product, you get a kickback or a percentage of that sale from you being able to convert the sale on that product. So if someone clicks my link and buys the product which I'm promoting that's on Amazon, I will get a percentage of it, maybe even 1%, but I will still make a little bit of money off that sale. And if you get hundreds of sales each year, then you'll make some pretty good money as a side income stream from affiliate links. For an example, I could make a video on the best office chairs or the best desks for an office, or maybe even the best products for YouTube gaming setup, this is dependent on what niche your channel's in. If you've got a gaming niche, you could do a video about the top 10 gaming products. If you're in a business niche, you could talk about the best business books and then basically have affiliate links for each of the products you mentioned. Put them in your description below and tell people that they can click the links in your description to buy the product. And then if any people buy them, you get a kickback or a percentage from those sales. Now I'd recommend to put in your description every time that they are affiliate links and you will gain a personal benefit from people clicking them because full disclosure is usually recommended. Now you may notice in the descriptions of my videos, I actually have a few affiliate links. If you click any of the services, they do help me, but in return, you also get a bonus from actually using them. So you might get a free trial to Skillshare or you might get a free Amazon or Audible trial that you probably won't get if you don't use my link. So using my link is actually better than just signing up to these websites for free, right? But I also make it very clear that they are affiliate links and they do help me from you using them. Now, I don't really particularly get paid much at all for any of these affiliate links right now because my channel is very small and we currently only have 2,000 subscribers. It's when people know, like, and trust you and you have a very big audience that affiliate links will become profitable. However, if you want to get started with affiliate marketing, I'd recommend Amazon Associates. I do have a full entire video that shows you how to use the platform, how to get the links to the products and how to sell the products and make money from it. So if you're interested, I'll link that in the description down below. And the last thing I'm going to talk about before we finish this mini course on YouTube is to avoid YouTube networks and MCNs. Okay. YouTube networks and MCNs are basically almost like predatory agencies at this point. They basically make more money, the amount of the YouTubers that are signed up under them. So they have agents and scouts that will try and get creators or YouTubers to join their network and they'll get a percentage from each creator so they might only take 10% sometimes they take as much as 45 to 50% which is pretty crazy of your revenue each month in the contract and in return they'll offer you things like free music a copyright tool to help you with copyrighted content help you get your YouTube channel back and give you support these used to be very good and lucrative back in the old days of YouTube where YouTube wasn't very big and they couldn't really help creators but now that Google is backed by YouTube you already have all these resources in YouTube studio for free YouTube studio has a free music library that you can use that's copyright free. They have a free copyright tool to take down content which is which is stolen your videos. They also have direct YouTube support reps that can talk to you if you're a YouTube partner within seconds. And they have everything that these YouTube networks are already promising you. So you don't need a network at all nowadays. In most cases, all you're doing is just signing away your money. In most cases, there's not really any benefits for a creator to join an MCN or a YouTube partner network. All you're going to be doing is giving away a portion of your ad revenue, which in most cases you probably will need. I've joined one network in the past when I was very small. They only took 10% and I did get some pretty good perks from it, but it didn't really offer me any utility. And I found out later that I could get everything for free that they were offering me anyway. Don't make the mistake of joining a network, especially if they have a contract, you may have no choice to leave and you may need to stay in it for years and you'll never be able to get the money back. If you join a network and you sign up for a contract and you're locked into it for two years then they're going to be able to take a percentage of your youtube ad revenue for two years and if you change your mind you can't get out of it if you're really dead set on joining any network make sure that they have a no locking contract that you can leave anytime and make sure to, to read the fine print and if you really don't understand it just resort to contacting a lawyer because you need to know exactly what you're signing up for but i'd really recommend against it you don't need a network and they don't really provide anything valuable and one thing to note is a lot of networks claim that if you join them they can find you sponsorships. My main channel with 100,000 subscribers, I'd consider that to be a fairly big channel, but the network that was trying to get me to join promised me sponsorships. When I looked deeper into it, they said that they couldn't actually find me any, so it's a good job that I didn't join, so I'd recommend just to stay away from this. Networks in most cases will only help their largest creators, so if they have a creator with a million subscribers, they'll probably give all the sponsorships to them anyway. You joining as a smaller fish, you're only giving them your money and you're not getting anything in return. So that's going to conclude 
include this YouTube video on how to make a successful YouTube channel that's both profitable and that will make you money online. This was kind of like a mini course that I wanted to create to help you guys get started this year to actually make some money and follow your passion of YouTube. If this video was valuable in any way, all that I ask is for you guys to like the video and subscribe because I'll be putting out a lot of free content like this, huge free courses for entirely free that you won't find anywhere else. If you have any questions about anything I've talked about in this video, or if you need any advice, feel free to drop a comment below. I love helping people out and replying to all the comments, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.